Very good. Uh, welcome to the Township Committee meeting, October 19th, 2020. This is via Zoom remote access, uh, 7 p.m. Uh, for the Township of Delanco at 770 Coopertown Road in Delanco. Roll call, please. Mr. Brown. Here. Ms. Fitzpatrick. Here. Ms. Holland. Here. Mr. Olette. Here. Mr. Templeton. I'm here. Also present, Mr. Schwab, Township Administrator, Mr. Foxer, Township Engineer, Mr. Heinhold, Township Solicitor, uh, Mrs. Lohr, Municipal Clerk, Mrs. Martin, Deputy Municipal Clerk. I don't see Mr. Fenimore in the uh, Hollywood Squares window. Uh, <laughs> Chief DeSanto is here, and we also have Scott Taylor, our, our planner. Um, did I miss anybody? And Aaron, our technical... Um, technical advisor. Advisor. All right, and... Controller. Virtual world traffic cop. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's spend some flag salute to Mrs. Lohr with the uh, the statement, please. All the notices. Please be advised that proper notice of this meeting has been given in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act in the following manner. Written notice has been mailed, <clears throat> excuse me, to the Burlington County Times and Courier Post and published in the December 27th, 2019 editions. Written notice has been posted on the official bulletin board of the Township of Delanco at least 48 hours prior to the meeting. And please take notice that in accordance with Open Public Meetings Act, NJSA 10-4-6, uh, in, and in consideration of Executive Order Number 103, 104, and 107 issued by Governor Murphy, declaring a state of emergency and a public health emergency in the state of New Jersey, the Township of Delanco does hereby notify the public that to protect the health, safety, and welfare of our citizens while ensuring the continued functioning of, functioning of government, the meeting of the Delanco Township Committee scheduled for October 19th, 2020 is available via electronic format for members of the public who wish to participate in the meeting remotely. The public may participate, participate via remote access as follows. Um, and we are via Zoom uh, with the credentials listed on the agenda as uh, available online. Uh, also too, we have a remote public meeting statement, advanced public comments. Advanced public comments will be accepted via written letter or electronic mail. All advanced comments must be received no later than six hours prior to the commencement of the published public meeting start time. All advanced public comments must be submitted to the municipal clerk's email at jlordelancotownship.com or the municipal clerk's attention at 770 Coopertown Road, Delanco, New Jersey. Public comments submitted before the remote public meeting deadline will be read aloud during the remote public meeting. Procedures for making comments and muting function during the remote meeting public comment sessions. Members of the public who wish to make comments or have questions during the meeting public comment sessions may either make their comments or questions via audio option or by typing in uh, their comment or question via the Zoom plat uh, platform chat option to all participants, not a specific participant, during the public comment sessions or during any scheduled public hearings. Comments, questions submitted via the chat function during the time when the meeting is officially open to the uh, public will be read. Other comments or questions submitted via the chat function at any other time during the meeting may or may not be read during the meeting. Members of the public who are deemed to be disruptive as defined by NJAC 539-1 may be muted after an initial warning for the duration of the public, public comment session and or remainder of the remote meeting session. The agenda document for this remote meeting is available on the Delanco Township website, delancotownship.com with all the um, extra extensions uh, either way. Um, would be able to access the agenda for this meeting. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. That's a lot to cover. Uh, just going to take one item out of order on um, the agenda to uh, help. Uh, Mr. Heinhold has a commitment starting at 730 and allow him to answer any questions we have on it. We're going to consider resolution 2020-121. This is previously tabled from the October 5th meeting uh, regarding authoriz authorization authorizing, excuse me, execution of pilot agreement with uh, GR Urban Renewal LLC. This is the uh, Stanker and Galetto slash Misfit Markets uh, phase 2A. Uh, and Mr. Heinhold, do you have any illuminating facts or well, just, information um, to pass on? The, the, a couple of the issues that were discussed last time, uh, I've communicated with Rocco, counsel for uh, Stanker and Galetto, uh, one of the questions had to do with what happens if Misfit leaves after a 10-year term and doesn't renew for another five years and five years. The, the pilot, uh, we've got a confirming letter from him that the pilot 
um, is for 20 years. If, if for some reason Misfit leaves, then they're still going to pay on the improvement just like they would if it was a regular tax situation and they lost a tenant. Uh, the tax is on the building, not the tenant. So the pilot stays in place and it's incumbent upon Stanker and Galetta to get somebody in there uh, to replace Misfits as a tenant. Um, the other issue, the other two issues were a little bit more technical in nature. The financial agreement, um, there was a question about whether there were any uh, additional charges beyond base rent that should be considered as part of the pilot. And we have under our pilot, which is required, carved out the land and common area improvements. So those are taxed under regular taxation and the various entities uh, such as Misfits, whoever comes next and um, RLS as members of the association all pay into common area costs, including the taxes that are paid. So they're, whatever charges they're charged for that are paid out um, in regular taxation. And then the last issue is when we start this clock on this pilot and, and we agree that they've been in under the TCO for months at this point, right? So we're gonna start with the, with the uh, TCO date. So as soon as we resolve it and approve it, we'll get it uh, finalized and then they'll pay back to when Misfits started occupancy. Any questions from uh, anyone on the committee regarding this, this item or any questions from Mr. Heinold? No, I'll just wanna say that uh, I, read, I read Doug's email, uh, you know, between his back and forth with Mr. Rocca. I'm, I'm very satisfied that we have Doug and Joe Raymond in place for this. And uh, regardless if I'm here or not, I know that it's gonna, uh, um, it's gonna be correct. So thank you, Doug and everyone else involved with the pilot. Well, I'm very satisfied that Joe Raymond is involved. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yeah, thank uh, you. To go for me. Anything else from anyone? Fern, no, I would, make, I would make the motion that we um, approve this resolution. I think I understand it. I read Doug's emails. John's right, Joe Raymond's on board. It's a good thing. I'll second that motion. Okay. Uh, motion by Kate Fitzpatrick, a second by Mr. Brown. And a roll call, please. Mr. Brown. Yes. Ms. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Ouellette. Yes. Mr. Templeton. Well, as always, um, I tend to disagree, or I do disagree with these things. Uh, as far as a redevelopment zone, I think uh, this this should have sunset it uh, with the Deetson Watson uh, uh, tragedy and loss there. But uh, uh, I, I think these these pilots are, are a disservice to our communities uh, at this time, uh, and uh, I'm voting no on this one. So, but thank you, Mr. Heinhold, uh, for the good work on this uh, and the back and forth. It's very complex, and Mr. Raymond for his her you know huge work on untangling this and getting something that uh, hopefully will be understandable uh, uh, as this thing uh, has its life uh, of 20 years. Uh, probably unlikely any of us uh, talking about it right now will be, uh, we'll see it at, at its completion, but uh, just so everyone understands it, whoever picks this up to look at it and say, you know, this is, this makes sense. So. Uh, and the township uh, is able to reap the benefits of it. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Heinhold, for uh, coming in tonight. Sure thing. Have a good night, everyone. Go on. Go. Thanks, Bye. All right. Uh, let's see. Discussion item, community, community development block grants, CDBG application. Uh, this has a very quick timeline and, and uh, submission. Uh, there's some other things that are coming up early next week or this coming week. So, uh, Mr. Fox. Uh. Yeah, um, the CDBG grant uh, is due on December 18th. Um, we now 
uh, in, in Blanco do have an area, and, I, and Janice sent out a map, I believe, to everyone, um, that qualifies for CDBG money. Um, we haven't had, had that in the past few years, so we, we had to use it only on accessibility issues. Um, now we can use it for pretty much any improvements in that area, in that one census area. Um, so that does include Town Hall. Um, and includes the area over between Ash and Cooperstown up to Burlington Avenue. Um, the, the one suggestion was to use those funds for putting sidewalk in front of Town Hall and Public Works. I did speak with um, community development and it's okay to, to apply for the grant, even though it's on county right away. Um, so they're okay with that. And I spoke with Joe Brickley, the uh, county engineer and he's fine with us applying and wish us luck on it. Um, so if we, if the, if the committee wishes, we can apply for that sidewalk for that, for that grant. Um, hey, you should also it, note that we have capital funds that we anticipated for that after we got, uh, went through the master planning, but uh, so that this would allow those funds to be used for other sidewalk areas. Uh, and there doesn't seem to be any engineering issue as to where the sidewalk would go in front of those two properties, maybe elsewhere. And Harry has submitted a preliminary proposal for doing the master plan that he and I will be discussing and we'll bring to you at the November meeting. But uh, this is a preliminary idea. They're having a meeting with the county next week or yeah. about this kind of stuff. So that's why we're bringing it to you now, in case you're interested in using the funds for that, unless you have any other ideas. The um, what is the usually the amount of the grant is around seventy five thousand dollars, maybe a little less, maybe a little more. Is that right. sufficient money, Harry, for the sidewalks? Yeah, actually, yeah, they they, they, they have been giving seventy eight thousand um, for the grant, um, and I did a quick, quick estimate. Um, it would be about forty thousand to put the sidewalk in front of public works and town hall. So we would have extra money that we can use in other areas as well. Um, we already, if, I, 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 I'm not sure if you recall, but we applied last year for additional handicap grants. Um, when we didn't get the grant the, the, the last round. Um, so that paperwork is already done and ready to go to be submitted if you want to just go with putting in handicap grants. Um, another another so possibility. Another possibility with sidewalks, so I can jump in, is because Scott being here, is that uh, uh, we, we have plans for the walkway in front of uh, Field of Dreams. And that's another, we own that property and we know where it's going to be. So that's possibly another option. What about Burlington Avenue down? Uh, down Cooper Street to the train station. Is that included? It looks like that's included. Um, it, no, it, it wouldn't be included. This is just in front of Town Hall and Public Works. But okay. I did touch base with, with uh, Joe Brickley on where he, he stands on that section between um, Hickory and the train station on Cooperstown. Uh, he hasn't gotten back to me on that. Um, one suggestion that might be an option is to, if we have extra money left over from our sidewalk, would be to kick it in on that section of the sidewalk and partner with the county on it. It wouldn't be enough to do both projects, but we could make it make a gesture and kick in some of our money for that sidewalk between Hickory and the train station. Would it be enough to include the sidewalk in front of um, Field of Dreams or is that included? No, I don't know. Scott, do you know how many, what, how long that is? The distance? That asphalt pathway that by the outside of the fence that we put in? Oh, it's good. It was asphalt? Okay. It could be asphalt. Yeah. Yeah, we uh, we would probably have enough money to do that. Yeah, I don't know if Scott, you have any thoughts? 500, 700 feet. Okay. Yeah, we, we would have enough to to do both. We can do the sidewalk in front of Public Works, Town Hall, and the, the asphalt path at Field of Dreams. So, um, just, 
just one question with the CBDG. Is it like now that we have a census track, is the, the funds, are the funds only able to be used within that tract or at anything that impacts the people within that tract? That has to go in that tract unless it's for elderly or handicapped improvements. Okay, yeah. so there would be no argument for doing the sidewalk from the from Burlington, what Kate was talking about, by saying that they would be using the sidewalk there to get to the train station. Well, that's actually in the track. Okay. Okay. That um, side. That's gotcha. within the zone. All right. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I, I think the top priority would be Cooper Street, and I've said it before, been mm -hmm. battling this for years, just trying to get that sidewalk repaired. Um, with the county help or without county help with our money, now CDBG money. But yeah, why, why is it shown uh, in yellow on this map that that is eligible? It, it goes <clears throat> across Burlington and comes down Cooper on that side. What side, the Larger's gas station side? No, no, no not the gas station side. Okay. Well, that's the side that we need. We need that side. The uh, would be the southbound side, I guess. Or? Yeah, Meet, meeting else uh, side. And as far as uh, a pathway at the Field of Dreams, I know that it's been uh, the focus of uh, the Rec Commission in the original plan. I know Scott, you you did the original plan for that park. I, you know, are they on board with that? I know there was an issue with uh, tree plantings and. So forth and so on. I, I don't know where the uh, rec commission stands on what they want to do out there. So I don't want to. I don't want to decide for them. Yeah, you'd still want to go and get their their approval. Obviously, it's just a question whether or not when they go to this Janice and Harry go to this meeting, whether they say here are the various things we want to make sure that they're eligible, and then you have to formally make. You're not going to make a formal decision tonight. Then you formally make make the, the decision. And if that's the area we want to go, then you're absolutely right. Then Scott's got to pull out those old plans and show them we got to get it to REC and make sure they think that's still a priority because he did show where tree planting is. The reason the fence looks like it looks is that when you put the pathway in there, there's spots for trees, so on. So that, that design had already gone through REC, but I'm sure they'd want to look at it again. It's a question of funding. And rather than try to get county open space money for that or use local money, if there is sufficient CDBG funds, and now is the time to do it because it's now a census tract uh, that is the average uh, income in that census tract is less than the average income in the county. That's how they come up with it, and that's probably because of Living Springs being in it. Um, so, in any case, oh. that's those are various options. Well. I, you know, I kind of agree with John Brown that, you know, we've been trying to get the county to work with us on Cooper Street from Burlington Avenue to the train track. So that is a horrendous mess. Um, why would we wait any longer for the county to come forth um, if we have an area now that we can get that done? And then if there's leftover funds, then utilize the, in front of the township building or public work because that's a mess. I, I think one of the issues was that there's always a time frame with using CDBG funds. If you don't finish spending the money and submitting it to them on a timely basis, this happened to us once, they took money away. So the money would need to be spent generally within a year from the application. I don't, Harry can give you a better idea as to whether or not the county would be in a position to reconstruct Cooperstown Road at that point and change the grade so we can tie that in. That's a more complicated project than the town hall or the public works or in front of Field of Dreams. I was looking for something quick and simple that would have no trouble getting the money spent and reimbursed because we spend the money and then we get reimbursed. And one time we didn't get reimbursed for all of it because we finished too late for them. Right. Well, we could talk, talk to the county. Harry can talk to the county about all those areas, and maybe that'll, you know, given the difficulty of that section between Burlington and the tracks, that that uh, might, uh, like, you know, put a bug in the county's ear. Yeah, if they'll do it. It's a great idea. I just am worried that they would 
yeah. be years away from doing the road. Yeah. But, yeah. I think um, I think they're coming to town. They've been in front of my store. Um, PSE and G marked out the gas line, and then their um, public works uh, guys were out there looking at the grade of the road. Um, and then they're working on Franklin Street now. So maybe they got plans for to come through and get some of our work done. Does anybody know? Well, they're working on they're working on the uh, the flashing light thing that the chief will report on his report. Right. Right. And, yeah. And the gas work is, I think, uh, the deli requested gas service. Yes. So I don't think that has anything to do with any of the county's planning to do other than our contract for the flashing pedestrian light at Franklin. Yeah, and they still haven't given me a date for the demolition at uh, at the 507 Burlington they, Avenue. They address. did or they didn't, Kate? They did not. Uh, they went, they went uh, out to bid again, rebid. Very so I don't good. think they're coming to Delanco anytime soon. Anything more to add, uh, Harry, on the uh, CDBG? No, what, what I would suggest is um, we can bring all this up, as you said, Mayor, to, to the county um, and see what they think. And I can follow up with a, with an email to everyone on what the outcome was and, and what we would suggest at that time. All right. And that'll give you time to think about it before the next meeting. Good. But it, right. sounds, it sounds like the, the area that we were talking about before is the highest priority. If we think we can do it, get it done and not lose any money on it. Yeah. If that is a problem, then you deal with the other two pieces where we would save our funds, yes. the other three pieces, so we wouldn't be spending our local funds on. And then that would give us the flexibility to take that money, that 40000 and spend right. it when the appropriate time comes, perhaps uh, elsewhere. All right. The other aspect of the CDGB process is we have to have a published public hearing um, on the... Uh, grant application, the project or projects that the township is thinking of submitting. Um, so that would have to happen at the November 16th meeting, which is our only meeting for November, is November 16th or the December, and I don't have a calendar in front of me, the first meeting in December, what's that, the second? Um, remember. Seven. My land use oh, board meeting is the first, so it would be like the eighth, the eighth. Wait a minute. Seven. Wait a minute. Seven. 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 And then the application is due on the eighteenth. So, um, and I do have to publish this public hearing. Uh, so, Harry and committee, what are you think? What do you look at for um, holding the public hearing? The, uh, the November sixteenth meeting or the December seventh meeting? Does putting it on the De December meeting, uh, does that back us into a corner? It, it gives us enough time to not rush it. It, gives it means you have to adopt that night. Yeah. You would have to adopt your resolution that night. Right. right. That, that would be fine. Unless you get a controversy. You, it's very typical. Are you comfortable with, with that giving you enough time to get this application in from the 7th to the deadline? Yeah, yeah, because once we decide on, on the November meeting what we're applying for, okay. we'll start the application at that point. So okay. it's just a formality. The resolution is just a formality. All right. Okay, so we'll do the public hearing at the December meeting and the resolution. All right, All right good. And then I'll have it, um, since the November 16th meeting is the, um, the professionals will be at that one since that's our only meeting, I'll just have it as a discussion, uh, continued discussion item. Good, okay, good. All right, then we'll, we'll hear from you after your meeting on the 22nd. Yes. Great. Harry, right, well, we got you here uh, for a couple minutes more. Uh, we got the two resolutions for the, uh, uh, the road, con uh, road improvement program and also for Hickory Street. Uh, yeah, any comments on that before you go? Uh, those, the, the bids all came in pretty good. Um, so we are recommending, you know, awarding the contract uh, for both of those. Um, we're also going to look at adding on to the drainage project, the flat valve, um, rather than doing that separate, the, the flat valve that's on Rancho and Poplar. Um, so I, we, we would definitely recommend awarding those projects. Great. The, the prices came and go. Good. And last item before you go, you had the meeting uh, with uh, the DEP, correct? Yes. Um, 
I, I, I did meet with um, the assistant commissioner of DEP uh, out at uh, the Zerberg uh, Seawall, uh, the Zerberg Mansion Seawall, and the meeting went very well. Um, I believe everyone got a copy of my, my email, um, but uh, we met out there and walked the site, and he was um, very receptive to us actually putting the seawall back in the same location as the original wall was located. Um, he's, he's an engineer, um, so he was looking at it from an engineering and, and practical standpoint, uh, as opposed to a bureaucratic standpoint. Um, so he was, he was quite, um, quite helpful actually. And he was going to go back to his staff and tell them his thoughts that it, that it should be approved, um, to be put back there. And it can be, we also discussed it, the living shoreline and that's not really feasible there. That's pretty obvious. And it could be either a uh, gabion basket seawall or he even, I showed him the, the bottom seawalls that we did on the street ends and, and he liked those. So he's even suggesting that they may even be acceptable. Um, but we have to work that out, the details on that. Uh, the one thing we do, I do need to do is get back to him. He wants dates on dates and photographs if anyone has them. And uh, if there's anybody in the public in, they can hear. Um, if anyone has any photographs or dates of when that seawall was built, um, it would be helpful. Um, photographs, especially, I have some old aerials and whatnot, but if, if I can get, pin it down a little bit more, that, right. that would be helpful. Asked, so, uh, um, if anyone has some any folks on the historic, uh, I've gotten uh, two old postcards and apparently there, there might be some other additional information uh, I've never been able to narrow it down to anything more than, uh, say, 1890 to, you know, 1915 or something like that, some kind of window like that. And I'm yeah. going to go back through the old uh, meeting minutes for the last uh, decade or so and see if I can get dates when we, uh, when the township removed the gazebo and the, uh, the Willow Street part of that uh, Willow Street brick wall. Um, when we took that down because it was getting undermined and presenting a hazard. So I'll get that to you as soon as I find yeah, it. Yeah, I did. Um, I can tell from historic aerials, the gazebo, you can see that when it was standing and then what year it came down. And, and, it, and it was approximately 10 years ago that, that, that was yeah. taken down. Yeah, that was our guess. Yep, that was a good guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, All right. Uh, after that, what's what's the next step and what do you think? The prospect yeah. of, of his, Mr. Mezze's uh, evaluation of what he thinks so uh, we can do there. Yeah, it's um the, the next step is uh, once I get this information him on on some photographs and dates, he's going to set up another meeting, um, a pre op meeting with all his his, his staff and us, um, and then we can actually make the application. And he's very confident there shouldn't be a problem. Um, we will have the same issues as before with the endangered species and things like that, but we can work around that like we did on the street ends. Yeah. Um, good, good work there. The good thing is we can put it back in the old location. Right. Good work, Harry. Thank you. Harry, I have a, a question. Uh, at the end of Ash mm -hmm. Street in front of the Fisher Camus building, there's a, um, is there work going on down there? There's a, um, a dump truck, a backhoe and a run and loader. Uh, yeah, that's actually. Is that us? No. Nah. Isn't that the environmental? Uh, no, that's that's actually um, whoever owns the utility poles. I don't know if it's public service or, or the telephone company, but they're going around the area and the, the poles that are old creosote poles. They dig around them and shove a plastic sleeve around them, basically, um, to, okay. to stop the creosote from contaminating the soil. Okay, so that that's what. Um, oh, okay, they they were there what one day last week, I think, right? Uh, yeah. Well, the trucks are there at night. I don't. Just, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that that's what okay. I was told they're there for. Yeah. Thank they you. Just did, they just did our street um, this week, this past week. Okay. Anybody have any questions for Mr. Fox? All right. Thank you, Harry. Thanks for. Okay. All right. Yeah. Good night, everyone. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Discussion item: Gateway Park Eagle Scout Project rendering. Uh, 
Let's see, Scott, 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 where are you? There you are, Scott. Scott Taylor. Where do you go? His square keeps moving. Yeah, when somebody leaves, it moves all the other squares, move up. <laughs> I'll try to hold still. Yeah. <laughs> there you are. Shall I start? Go for it. So we, Mayor Templeton, reached out. And good evening. Good to see everybody. It's been a little while since I've seen a few of you. Hope you all are well. Uh, Mayor Templeton reached out, and we were aware that the township had purchased the property, and it was brought to the forefront in response to an Eagle Scout who had approached the town to try to do a project out there. Concurrently, we know that the Environmental Advisory Board folks have been getting some grant money and have been working to try to implement pollinator habitat at multiple locations in the town. So we, uh, we also had several discussions and, re and reviewed a considerable amount of information that had been forwarded to us from Mr. Fritz <clears throat> relative to the historic aspects uh, of that property and of the area. So one of the things that we suggested and offered to do was to put together sort of a conceptual master plan that did several things. One, it addressed some existing uh, improvements that as the town moves forward to perhaps uh, improve um, some of the accessibility and some of the existing structures. And then also to set up a framework so that this Eagle Scout project and potentially even future Eagle Scout projects could sort of comprehensively move through and sort of uh, improve the park. I believe you guys have a copy of the master plan. I don't, <coughs> excuse me, Aaron, I don't know, or Janice, if you guys can share my screen or you allow me to, do you guys do I'm that? Um, I'm sorry, one moment. Um, it is not giving me that option. Do you, do you have it? Um, is it available on the website anywhere, Janice? No, no. not yet. No. Do you, Aaron, do you have that thing that says share screen? I can't allow him because do you have to make it a, a, an option available when you set up the meeting? Can you? Click on me, right click me, and make me a presenter. I can make you a host. Or a host. And then I'll be All able right, to share on. my screen. OK, so it's going to make me not the host. I give it back, I promise. So, OK, <laughs> I'm you can give up control. All right, you are all set. All right, we'll see if I can do it. Whoa. Cool. Go. Got it. Got it. Oh man, techie, tech, tech. So basically, um, I will use, I think the spotlighter might work. So, <coughs> excuse me, Rancocas Avenue to the bottom, Burlington Avenue here. This is the existing Gateway Park. And this area to the right is the the new addition. I don't want to call it the annex because part of our sort of goal here was to make this kind of flow and not look like an appendage to the existing park. So we know that a couple of the objectives were to tell some of the historic story. We also wanted to provide a little bit of outdoor seating. That also means some accessible walkway and then to provide a framework for some pollinator habitat. We notice that when we're out here in this space, it's really just open lawn that connects into the adjacent single family lot and to the factory beyond. So one of the things that we really wanted to try to do was create this space and try to define this as the park, create a little sense of privacy when you're in there, but also try to preserve some of this nice open lawn that is there. As great as Gateway Park itself is, there's not a lot of open play lawn that if somebody wants to have a family picnic or throw a Frisbee or just sit on a lawn and have a bagel and a cup of coffee. So we tried to embrace that. 
We also know there was a desire to have a specimen evergreen tree for the holiday lighting celebrations. So we actually brought that along uh, in the center here, which will have great visibility from Burlington Avenue. And then it'll also actually work to create some nice evergreen buffering and then to create a framework for this pollinator habitat that a lot of people just picture that as little wildflower looking things. We think that there are enough great pollinator species out there and we've done hundreds of acres for Burlington County. We're doing stuff in Avalon right now. But picking some of the ornamental flowering trees and the shrubs as well that have valuable pollinator benefits to them so that everything that we use in this buffer is low maintenance and drought tolerant as much as we can because we know we have limited maintenance resource. But try to get this to be an attractive buffer that can be implemented over time as part of an overall master plan so it all fits. The Eagle Scout project itself, when, and we met on site with um, Phil and uh, Amber Perlmutter and Liz Mattisette from Environmental um advisory board i'm trying to remember who else was out there on site with us but trying to come up with a framework and we also met with dj the eagle scout the eagle scout projects are sort of a work in progress they don't know whether they're going to raise three hundred dollars or three thousand dollars so we wanted to try to create something that he may have the opportunity to start in this location and then kind of work his way back. And however far he gets, he gets. The planting is kind of the low hanging fruit for a project like that. So we think that may work well. And there could be, we're showing a small section of concrete sidewalk to a sitting bench in this location. We'd like to see that continued as maybe just sort of a lawn walking trail or potentially if this was ever a future county grant application maybe make that sidewalk connection and have this little garden walk that connects back into the gazebo. We're showing some interpretive signage uh, out along uh, Rancocas Avenue. This would actually be pollinator signage here. Um, the county's Rancocas Creek Greenway Trail is actually gonna be coming down Burlington and down Rancocas. Eventually it ends up connecting under the train bridge and connects eventually into Pennington Bark to connect Amico to Pennington. <clears throat> so we thought bringing that interpretive signage out is gonna get a lot of eyes on it by bringing it out onto the sidewalk here. We're showing a birdhouse and some other features. We also noted that we're starting to see some failure of the brick paving around the gazebo and a lack of handicap accessibility. So we thought it made sense at some, to at least plan for at some point in the future for some reconstruction of the pavement around there for both safety, security, and accessibility. And then also the existing memorials are sort of just, um, just in the lawn. And we thought it might be nice to be able to have a small accessible concrete walkway to be able to give folks the ability um, to come up and experience that memorial and get a little bit closer to that. So that was sort of the trying to wrap together a lot of ideas that Peter Fritz had and uh, the environmental advisory board folks and, every, and trying to facilitate the Eagle Scout project for something that could happen in one phase or two phase or three phases as more Eagle Scouts come forward. That was the short version. Well, the, 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 the big picture and the, the, the best investment in, in this was that, you know, you kind of came up with a general plan and you're looking at everything from with a wide angle lens. So, one person or one group doing a project isn't going to squash or isn't going to preclude another group or another person from doing something at a later time. This is all, you know, as, as you say, Scott, a draft and nothing, nothing is, is set in concrete, but it's, it's kind of gives you a conceptual idea of what, what kind of ground we do have to work with, but to preclude 
spending right. money or spending time, or, you know, volunteer time doing something that ends up creating a problem later on. So uh, I do want to thank you. Uh, as, as we talked uh, a while ago, this became a bit of a spreading paint uh, with you, uh, and, and what you offered to do uh, uh, gratis and pro bono. So I really appreciate that. Uh, we included uh, your invoice in the agenda packet for the committee to, to see what uh, the services that you and, and your staff uh, did contribute uh, toward, towards what we have, what we're looking at right now. So thank you very much uh, for, uh, for making that offer. Thank you. You're welcome. It looks beautiful. Yeah, that's nice. What I, what I understand um, is that DJ is going to come to the November or somehow present his project to our November meeting I, if he's if he's ready. Um, I don't know if anybody knows about that. I think uh, when I, when we spoke, Kate, the idea was this is. A, a township park first. So it was really appropriate for rec and committee to say, hey, what do we see happening on this property generally? And I understand rec took a look at this last week or the week before. It's now for you guys. <clears throat> and if everybody is generally like, hey, this is kind of make this makes sense. We think this works for us. Then to have a follow up meeting with DJ and say, hey, here's kind of a framework. Here are the things that we think would work. And then he can really work on his specific proposal. Our mm -hmm. office and the EAB can help him with species, but we, we wanna be careful about having him do the concrete unless he can get a concrete contractor to donate that. But I don't think we want a bunch of 15 year olds pouring and finishing contract on public no, property. No, I don't know what Doug, I don't know who Doug Lore used when he did the concrete pads for the um, the street ends, when he put the benches in, that was an Eagle Scout project. Janice may be able to address that, but um, the township, I know John Fenmore has already looked into having the area around the gazebo um, taken care of, uh, he had indicated to me that he was getting some bids on that because it is a problem. I'm there a lot cleaning up and what have you, and um, it's a trip hazard. Yeah, yeah, it is. Good, I'm, I'm happy to hear that. Um, if he has any questions, please have him reach out to me because it'd be nice to get sort of a permanent solution there because the, papers, I, the papers just settled. Yeah. yeah, okay, good. And, and Kate, just so, uh, on the uh, Vine Street Pocket Park, that was the Eagle Scout project. Um, that was that pathway, that stamped concrete pathways were done by a professional um, concrete uh, company that donated their services. Oh, good. And who did the one, who did it for Doug down on the riverbank? He, they bench, benches um, at the end of the uh, street ends. They were actually, uh, the posts were put in and mixed by the, um, the adult scout leaders and put in and then later on, several years later, maybe Phil um, remembers this, um, Rec went back and had uh, the comp company pour the pads around the benches. So when my older son did the, um, the benches at the street and they were just in the concrete posts um, and then Rec added the pads later on, I believe those pads were professionally done. Um, but the um, other Eagle Scout project, Stevens at Vine Street Pocket Park, that pathway, that stamp concrete pathway was, um, uh, well, the labor was donated. Um, and I think the only thing he had to pay for and he had raised funds for was the, the actual cost of the concrete, but all the labor um, was donated by a concrete company. That's great. Thank you, Janice. You're welcome. Thank you. We, we do, uh, uh, this is Phil McFadden. We do have a concrete, CMA uh, concrete is who we use. And, and that's who donated the work for um, Stevens Eagle Scout project. That, that is correct, yes. Uh, Phil, has, uh, has Rec already looked at this plan or this uh, tentative draft? Or is that upcoming? We, ha we, we have reviewed it. We, we have, as far recreation position is, yes, it, we're 100% we're, we're behind it. Mm -hmm. The only thing that was hindering us was getting DJ back into the Recreation Commission 
after we had the meeting with EAB, Scott Taylor, and Historic. So that's why we, we, we kind of approved it at the meeting, but we're waiting for him because he has to do a presentation to the commission, to the township committee so that he gets part of his Eagle Scout project is his presentation. We kind of sped it up a little bit faster for him so that this way we could start with the removal of the grass. The, we have to go eight, eight inches down. We have to put the soil in from the county and the compost from the county. And then at that point, then he'll be controlling the planning with EAB and figuring out which direction they're going. So is as as the Eagle Scout candidate already already made his his uh, presentation to you? Or he, has, he has not done his his presentation. Will be next month, the next meeting. All right. We only we only gave him. It was approximately maybe not even a week. We only had like four days in between right. the design, and so we didn't want to rush him along with it. All right. No good. So when's your uh, November meeting? It's Second Thursday of the month. The third, November twelfth. Is it the third? Yeah. Yeah, November. November twelfth. Yeah. All right. And so, are so we the planning things will take place till what? April. Burn, you broke up. Terror. The plantings won't take place till the end of March, beginning of April. I think that was the plan. Because for these pieces to come together, it really wouldn't be happening until December or January at the very earliest. And he still needs to fundraise. He needs to go through. He's only 14 or 15, so we have time. Yeah. But I think his plan, and I know the EAB, <coughs> you know, trying to get this stuff in in the spring would be ideal. Okay. Well, uh, you know, it's 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 in his court when he's when he's ready and, and he's got a got a plan to present the rec and whenever that comes through and when he wants to come and and, and present to the uh, to the committee. So um, we'll he, just give him as much time as he needs. Right. He has uh, four years to complete his Eagle Scout project, from what I understand. That his right. dad told me, and he is. He is a young man, 14, uh, but he's very anxious. So um, hopefully he'll get his plan in to wreck and we can review it. And All right. Okay. So maybe, maybe we can ask him to plan it this spring and then weed it for the next three years. <laughs> yeah, like that was that. my plan. I usually do the weeding. Have to water it for the next three years. Yes. <laughs> Anything else, Scott, or anything, any other questions from the committee or anybody on uh, regarding the plan here? I guess not. All right. Good. And well done. Aaron's Very good. The host again, right? Good seeing you all. Oh, yeah, I have to give up, give up my host. Uh, yes. <laughs> but you want to stay here all night. That was I'm pretty cool, though. I'm not sure if I know how to do that. Uh -oh. uh, just click on the three buttons at the top right hand top of your screen and make you a host make, put there it you go mine. yeah make me the host there you go all right you guys are great yeah. seeing you all all right thank you all right take care thank you all right excellent uh, public comment statement. Uh, purpose of the public, public comment session is to allow residents to share information and interviews with the talent, Palenco Township Committee. Since the committee may be hearing the information for the first time, it is not always possible to have issues and questions settled within the public comment session. It's a report of advanced remote meeting comments and questions. Is this the same thing, Janice, or is this? This is the uh, new requirement, um, the advanced remote meeting is the new requirement that anybody that submits any comments or questions to the township committee may do so up to six hours prior to the start of this meeting. And this is where 
um, I do want to, it kind of gets a gray area between this section, this remote uh, meeting comments, questions versus correspondence. But we did receive on Friday afternoon uh, from Amber Perlmutter, Potter, Amber Perlmutter um, a request uh, for the township uh, for signs at the Newton's Landing Basins. So this is kind of both a pre, um, you know, uh, meeting comment question as well as correspondence. And it just says attached as a letter from EAB as well as some additional correspondence between EAB and the county requesting permission from the township to place a permanent educational sign out at Newton's Landing Basins. Could this be forwarded to township committee members and possibly added to the next township committee agenda for this Monday, October 19th? Um, the agenda had already been set and transmitted when this had when this come, came in, but it's certainly being read in full as far as the request from the EAB for interpretive signs or educational signs at the Newton's Landing Basins. So everyone did receive this in their email with the attachments and the letter that was attached is from Amber Perlmutter uh, to the Township Committee, Mayor Templeton and Township Committee members um, that the EAB would like to request permission um, to uh, place permanent educational information signs outside, um, out at the basins and um, near the traditions at Newton's Landing development. Um, the sign would be placed on Burlington County property and would be paid for using EAB's budget funds. Um, the EAB has already received written permission from the county pending Delanco Township permission. And um, now, would you like me to read the full letter, Mayor? No, I, I, unless anyone has any questions or, or gaps in, in information. Um, and I believe Amber is uh, logged in. I think she, she's- She's yeah. muted right now, but she can certainly hear us. All right, well, let me uh, formally comment and question section of the meeting is now open to the public. Uh, uh, Ms. Perlmutter, do you have any comments to add to your letter? and anything explanatory and what you've done uh, talking with the county? Um, well, do any of the committee members have any questions about it? I mean, I know that the basins issue was brought up before, so everyone should be up to speed about the complaints. And then, you know, Newton's Landing residents wanted to mow it out there, but we wanted to wait, so. Well, this is just regarding your signs. Okay, so yeah, the signs are basically just educational to, you know, let people know that it's a eco habitat friendly area and it should only be mowed when, you know, during the correct time period, not in the spring or summer when uh, different species are laying their eggs and raising their young. And um, we spoke with the county, uh, Jen Bulova, park specialist, and she said that her superintendent um, gave permission to put a sign on county property as long as Delanco Township is okay with it. Yeah, would that be uh, one sign or multiple signs? Um, depending on cost and our budget, um, we saw a few areas where there could be signs. One area is would be the best for one sign. It could be a double-sided sign, so then we would only need one sign there. Okay. Is that on that uh, the connector trail that bisects the uh, the two basins? Yes. Okay. Right near there. All right. Any questions from any on the committee or any additional information you need? Will we see a draft of what what the actual verbiage is going to be in advance? Uh, yeah, we can do that. We haven't picked out any signs or any actual verbiage yet or pictures. You know, there's there's a lot of different things we could do on a sign depending on the size. But that's something that we definitely do. So is it the intent to, uh, this is Fern, is it the intent that the county's gonna continue to mow this once a year in October? And I guess whatever trees may start to sprout in that area, um, is that being taken care of? Or is this eventually just gonna be uh, totally natural where it won't be touched. Um, I don't know specifics on that. I know that they usually do their mowing sometime after November, I believe, uh, but I don't know about, about total specifics like that. 
Right, right now, Fern, the uh, uh, John Fenimore is going to retain a contractor to take out some of the heavy brush that's that's grown in around the uh, uh, the drainage outfalls on both basins, and I think that's also may uh, may spread into taking out some of the saplings uh, that have grown up in the in the field area. Um, I'm still I've sent an email to uh, the county last week, uh, one of several to try to nail down a date uh, when they are uh, planning to mow from one office in the county parks. Uh, they're telling me after Thanksgiving and another office of the county park system, they're telling me sometime late winter, early spring. So uh, we're still trying to firm that up and uh, uh, mainly just coordinate our, our actions with uh, what the county is doing next door at Pennington. Thank you. Anything else for Amber? So we're in agreement that that's uh, the township's okay for the signposting. Uh, if, if there's a letter, Amber, that you've received from the county uh, that uh, uh, in writing that they've approved that, uh, if you could forward that to uh, Mrs. Lohr for record. Okay, I think there was a um, screenshot of the email, but I can send it again. No, I okay. do have that. I have okay. that with the, um, yeah, with the file. Yeah, All okay, right, we've great. already got it. Thank you. All right. Uh, any other, I think, anything else, Amber, or, uh, or anything on that topic? We'll move on to more, any other public comment. That's it from my end. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Thanks for the good work. Thank you. Um, hi. I have a quick comment. Um, this is uh, Stephen McLaughlin at 740 Rank Locus Avenue. Um, and this is just a quick comment about um, housekeeping. Um, I noticed on the Delanco Township website that um, the, I was looking up the minutes from Township Committee meetings and the last posted minutes are from July 13th um, and it's now you know, October 19th. So I was just, and in addition, the, the past agendas are not available. So I was just hoping that you know, maybe the, those could be brought up to date at some point. Um, and that's my comment. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for calling. Thanks for uh, for making note of that. Thank you. Any other public comment? Justin, um, just to remind the public, um, we are now open uh, to the public for a comment and question session. You will need to unmute yourself uh, if you wish to make a comment uh, or have a question for Township Committee. Last call, any comment any for the uh, Township Committee, any public comment? All right, comment questions section of the meeting is now closed to the public. Comments and reports, please. Uh, Township Administrator, Mr. Schwab. Just to remind people the budget submissions are due uh, middle of November and the other things I have to talk about will happen during the section about COVID and then later on we'll talk about the best practices and discussion. All right. Thank you. Uh, department heads, uh, Chief DeSanto. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just a couple things, as Mr. Brown indicated, we're working on uh, Franklin Street for the pedestrian flashing light. Uh, it's uh, been, been, been uh, through several postponements by the contractor. So they finally uh, settled on a day today. Uh, what we were informed that they only needed the police one day, and but they would be out there other days continuing the work, but they only needed one day of traffic control. So I'm expecting you may see them out there again tomorrow, and hopefully they'd be finishing up their work by the end of the week and the light be up and running. Um, crosswalks, I, I reached out to uh, Marty Livingston from the count, County Highway Engineering. Um, that was all in part of trying to figure out when they're going to start this project for the pedestrian crossing light. Um, so um, he gave me some general information about the light. I end up have to just go and directly to the contractor to get uh, you know have a more of a direct, direct line of communication in regards to that in terms of scheduling. So he never got back to me uh, about the painting of the crosswalks that are on the county road. I'll reach back out to him and see if he um, can let me know if 
the intention is to do it in the fall. And then when the temperature gets to a certain, um, you know, it gets too cold, they, they won't do it. So it might not be back out in the spring, but I'll see if the plan is for them to maybe come through after the lights up and then uh, hit all the crossings. Um, he did indicate they do it in regions. So, you know, we, you know, they kind of do Riverside, Delanco, Beverly, you know, all at the same time. Um, they don't work in one part of the county at a time. So I will follow up and, and see if I can get an answer if that's going to happen before the end of the year. The, uh, the fence that uh, you agreed to put at the Vine Street entrance to Hawk Island, uh, the contractor, I spoke with him. He hasn't started to work yet. Uh, I did uh, consult with the uh, zoning officer and he, he gave me the green light. He said there was no issue uh, with just uh, moving the fence five feet. Uh, it's still, it's not in the right of way. So um, he's, uh, he was happy to the location of the fence where it's gonna be. And if I uh, don't see any work started this week, I'll reach out to Thor Construction and, and see what their time frame is gonna be for the installation of that fencing gate. The uh, other thing I want to bring up is I noticed that uh, I guess the Southern uh, River communities, Riverton, Palmar, Cinnamonson had, had gathered uh, a meeting with Philadelphia Police Department in reference to noise coming across the river, uh, which was quite timely because I guess it, was, it wasn't this past weekend, I guess it was the weekend of the, uh, the 9th, 10th. Um, we got a couple of noise complaints about no music and it was actually coming across the river. The officers went out to investigate it. Um, it seemed to be coming across the river. So that was quite timely. Uh, they were meeting with the Philadelphia 15th district, which is more across from, um, I guess you would say Riverton, Cinnamonson area, Palmar. Uh, I asked the chief of Cinnamonson, Chief Calabrese, to include me in those uh, meetings and make me aware of them. Then I looked into the um, map of the Philadelphia police districts and we're actually, uh, Hawk Island is across from the eighth police district, which was not part of that uh, task force or meeting, however you want to phrase it. So I reached out to the Philadelphia eighth district, the captain. Um, I got a return call from his lieutenant and I explained to him the uh, situation. You know, there's noise coming across the river, uh, potentially be can be coming from the 18th, 8th district and also maybe be coming from Ben Salem. But in regards to the 8th district, I, uh, at least I got someone to speak with. And while I was on the phone with him, I talked to him about the, um, the uh, Linden Street boat ramp. I don't know if anybody's familiar with that, but what it is, that's a public ramp that's run by the city. It's a, considered a city park. And so uh, what I understand from talking from the Marine Police a lot of the activity that ends up at Hawk Island comes from that boat ramp. So I inquired, you know, if they could help us out with maybe, uh, you know, extra patrols in the boat ramp and and uh, see if they can catch anyone coming on and off the boat ramp and be causing problems. And he um, informed me that and apparently it was an issue for them as well because they finally, uh, he said, they've been, um, you know, asking. I guess for quite some time for it to be closed earlier than it was. So they start closing the ramp at eight o'clock. So he, he said, we uh, hopefully that make a difference. So the, the boat ramp, public boat ramp on the Philadelphia side in the eighth district is gonna be closing eight o'clock daily. Um, but we did establish a line of communication. He gave me um, a direct phone number for the uh, eighth district headquarters for us to call in there if we, determine that the loud noise is coming across from the river from the 8th district side. Um, there, is a, there is a bar that's across from Hawk Island. I don't know if anybody's ever been on that side of the, of the river, but there is a bar there and uh, that's right down the street from the public boat ramp. Uh, the uh, other um, person I would like to speak with is the chief of Ben Salem PD. My officers tell me there appears to be some type of venue that's having outdoor weddings, parties. Uh, the music may be coming from there as well. I reached out to Ben Salem's police chief. I've yet to uh, get a return email or phone call. Uh, we'll continue follow up and ask them to do the same. Give us a line, direct line of communication. Uh, 
you know, I know Philadelphia police is probably pretty busy, but they're at least willing to entertain the uh, line of communication and we'll, we'll do our best to reach out to them if we find it's coming out from Philadelphia and see if they can help us out at, at, at all. I know they're a busy police department, but I was uh, happy to see that they, they called me fairly, called me back fairly quick. I was, I was kind of surprised. Uh, the, um, so I'm just waiting for Ben Salem. And once, once we hear from Ben Salem, I'm gonna try to do the same thing. See if they can give us a direct line to reach out to them and see if they can help us out if the music's coming more from the side. Uh, looking at the map, it's, you know, I would say it's 90, 10, 90% of across from us is Ben Salem and about 10% is the eighth district. That's all I have. Very good. Appreciate the going the extra mile there to, to make contact there and uh, try to connect this because it is a, a regional problem. So. And I will, uh, once I receive notification, because I'm still interested in attending those meetings that the um, Cinnamon and Palmar Riverton are having, because I, I think we can get some ideas um, you know, uh, from them. So, and, you know, Chief from Cinnamon and said the noise may be coming as far north as, uh, you know, to us, the noise that they're experiencing. I mean, it's hard to tell, but yeah. I, my, you know, my common sense answer would be no, it's probably coming from the Linden Street area. Um, like I said, there's a bar there, there's, there's a public park where I'm sure there's people just sitting in their car and playing music, so. I've noticed um, some, some boats uh, late at night, Saturday, Friday, Saturday nights, a uh, couple of times this summer at the end of Hawk Island that they must have some honking stereo systems or amps on the, on the boats because a couple of times they've come up river and you're looking at the, and you can't believe this much noise is coming out of, of a small, you know, bay line or mm -hmm. something like that. But that's apparently what's going on, or at least one, one area of, of noise. So. Well, I, I did notice that in their, uh, in their group meeting that they CC'd or included the Coast Guard. And it sounded like the Coast Guard was interested. So I'll make them aware of the problem we're experiencing at Hawk Island. And, and you know, if they're, going, you know, traveling around that portion of the Delaware, you know, it's, yeah. we're just, you know, just up river a little bit. So, well, so I'm just bugging earlier too. Yeah. yeah, it may subside with the season and the weather, but uh, uh, keep can keep those connections as you've, if you've, you've started to develop them, Chief, and uh, certainly be useful in the springtime when things start up again. Yes. All right, uh, Public Works, Mr. Fenimore, are you out there? I don't think so. Uh, administration, Mrs. Lohr. Yes, uh, I have a few things. Uh, the first is this past Saturday, we had a fall um, town cleanup as well as a uh, shredding event for residents. I did get a report that um, it was uh, not as robust as the spring cleanup. However, a public works, um, the big items were tire, a lot of tires, TVs and computers a lot of electronics and then the tires. The shredding event, we had uh, uh, well over 50 uh, residents participate in that. We don't have the, um, the tonnage yet on the amount of shredding, uh, but that was very successful. Uh, the next thing is November, Saturday, November 7th is our annual rabies clinic. That is still on for right now. Um, and we will be having social distancing uh, with people waiting in their vehicles with their pets until their number is, is called um, and keeping people uh, socially distanced during that event. Masks will be required uh, to be able to enter in and have your um, pet vaccinated. Um, and that's for the people, not necessarily the dog or the cat, <laughs> the man. Um, also too, uh, we are, it's, the, the vote by mail ballots um, have been mailed out to the registered voters. We are getting a lot of phone calls, fielding a lot of phone calls, inquiries from residents. I know the county is very, very busy. Um, one thing I want to point out um, for the record, we sent out another email blast today, is that the drop box at the township, the, the gray drop box or any of our drop box, well, is not a vote by mail drop 
Dropbox. We have signs on there, on all our drop boxes, on the windows, um, but we are still getting people dropping their vote by mails in our, our township drop box. There is a protocol that we follow with the um, county election board to make sure that those ballots uh, get to the county. But I just wanna remind people that um, the uh, gray uh, metal drop box at the township is for permits tax payments, uh, township business. It is not an official vote by mail. Matter of fact, what we're, what are go what we're going to do next week um, in anticipation of um, you know, uh, uh, increase in people wanting to return their ballots is we're actually gonna bring that um, metal drop box inside and uh, not have that available on the outside um, and uh, put more signs up where you can drop your uh, ballot off at. Um, and then the final thing is I uh, just wanted to, for the record, acknowledge that when the meeting was open to the public for session one, we, um, we had no uh, chats submitted through the, the Zoom chat platform. So that was not looked uh, overlooked. We just had no one submit any comments or questions via the chat. And there'll be that opportunity again, um, again later in the meeting during session two. Thank you, Mayor. Hey, um... Just to point out, uh, there's a lot of good information that Mrs. Lohr, uh, uh, Beverly, uh, Russell, and, uh, and Aaron have put up on the, uh, on the website on election information, where the Dropbox locations are, uh, and other methods to get your ballot in. There's also a photograph of the, what, a, what the proper Dropbox do, does look like. It's very distinct. It doesn't look like anything else. And so that's there for, as an example. So it's actually the one down in Cinnamon. Uh, but thanks for the good work getting getting a lot of complex information out to the public there. Uh, Council committee comments. Uh, Mrs. Patrick, please. Okay. Um, well, Christine and I met with um, members of the Board of Ed, Mr. Mersinger and Vicki uh, LaSalle regarding the library contract. Uh, we distributed copies of the contract that we had proposed and they were shocked to, um, to see that, you know, we only um, pay for 200 or 2,000 square feet when in fact the library is 4,000 square feet. So they are, it's under uh, review with their attorney. Mr. Mersinger did uh, visit the space with, with uh, Mrs. Radcliffe and she um, uh, was very helpful in advising him the information regarding the school versus uh, the public library. So we're waiting to hear back on that. There may be a joint meeting held with members of the board and Christine and I have asked to be included in that meeting. Um, so hopefully we may get some more information on that. Uh, the history board, um, we had our test Zoom meeting last night and that went well. And we're gonna have our November 4th meeting um, via Zoom. Uh, I would like to, I don't know if you can see this or not, but the history board actually uh, won the Burlington County uh, History Recognition Program um, Crowley Awards to Delanco Historic Preservation Advisory Board for preservation, planning, and education. And this was regarding our quilt. And I just feel that for the public's benefit, if they weren't aware of the quilt, that I should read this blurb that they put uh, together with the award. Um, that over a period of two years, uh, project chair Marilyn Entenin and her committee planned and worked with the community groups to execute a comprehensive project to educate and uplift the public regarding the history of Delanco Township by creating and displaying a unique art object, a community quilt. The quilt was created by transferring images of historic locations throughout the Lanco, courtesy of Old City Quilt in Burlington. Community members such as the Lanco mayor, first responders and Girl Scouts were taught how to sew individual squares while sewing. They shared stories and memories of the locations uh, and of the township. When the squares were completed, the quilt was assembled by 
Village Quilters of Mount Holly. The community quilt was first displayed in October 2019. In January 2020, the Delanco Historic Preservation Advisory Board held an event titled Tangled Tales, uh, which highlighted the many stories of the quilt and those who helped make it uh, had to tell. The project was enhanced by a 48 page exhibit catalog, which featured the history of each location and contributors to the project and their background. It was printed by Strassheim Design and Print in Philadelphia. This was partially funded by Delanco Township and has made available to the community at no cost. Um, this was a, a, a wonderful undertaking and Marilyn Antiman and Peter Frick are to be congratulated for putting this together and making it such a success for Delanco. So kudos to them for doing that. Um, I did forward information regarding the crossing guards to the um, president in the senior club since Delanco is in need of some crossing guards and that uh, information, that flyer will be sent out to them. Thank uh, you. I, I held a um, cleanup day at Gateway Park with the Boy Scout Troop number 19 on um, October the 11th. Uh, I also attended the Burlington County ride honoring eight local police departments. Uh, I wasn't riding a motorcycle, but I was standing out in front of the municipal building in Delanco waving my flag um, on behalf of our police department. It was a heartwarming event and it became very emotional actually for me to see all these motorcycles, Jeeps, cars, and some trucks riding through our town honoring our police department so it was really incredible i wish more people would have been out there but i'm sure some of people some people saw them riding through town um i did attend community day cleanup for some reason there's always something i can find to drop off at public works and i did have a box of items shredded uh rec has a lot of things coming up so we have the best decorated Halloween house coming up. There is a flyer on, uh, on our website, um, township website regarding this. So people have to decorate their house by, of course, today. Uh, we're having a judging on October 22nd and the winners will be announced on October 24th. There will be first, second, and third place winners. This is something similar to what we do at Christmas, and we thought we would add this since so many people in town decorate their homes for Halloween. And we also have a park and view movie night featuring the Adams Family, the original 1991 film. That is Saturday, October 24th at the Field of Dreams. We have 75 spaces for cars. So it's like a drive-in movie, uh, pre-registration is required, uh, space is limited, and they have to uh, sign register online. So I have, have a flyer for that if anyone's interested. Um, and also, I just want to say that we're still waiting to hear from the uh, fire department as to whether or not we're going to be able to have anything for Christmas or the gingerbread decorating. And I think, I think that's everything I have. Thank you. That's a lot of stuff, Kate. If I missed anything, if I missed anything Phil, I'm sure he'll be there and he'll add anything direct that I may have missed. That's a lot, thank you. Uh, Mr. Brown. That's a tough one to follow. I have nothing to report tonight. So we're gonna go for average here. <laughs> Very good. All right, uh, Mr. Allett. Yes, from the Joint Land Use Board and uh, Janice and Kitty, you want to chime in at any point. But we did have a discussion about the uh, the fence ordinance and trying to help the resident out at uh, this is on Vine Street, and uh, there was much discussion about whether the fence was legal, not you know. Uh, whether they had the right permits, and uh, you know, we went back and forth on that. You know, 
how far back, uh, you know, was this resident that had put the fence up or, you know, the previous resident. And all this man wants to do is fix his, uh, his fence and put in the six foot fence. Uh, if he does the four foot fence or uh, in that area, there's no problem. Uh, it was also suggested that had he gone before the joint land use board or taken it to the joint land use board, that it probably would have been just reviewed and he would have gotten his okay to just change out that small section of the fence. And we started talking about uh, position of the fence, you know, is it the back of the house uh, where the ordinance currently uh, states where a resident can uh, put a, I guess, a privacy fence or uh, a fence to that spot. And uh, in this situation, that doesn't work. And we have uh, other residents who do have similar situations with fences towards the front of the house. Now we definitely don't want uh, stockade fences in front of the property, uh, you know, so that you're looking at a stockade fence uh, covering the front of the house. Then there was the talk about uh, site view uh, from the street going back and why can't this resident just have his uh, four, use the four foot fence instead of a six foot fence. So then if he does a six foot fence, uh, there was discussion uh, of 45 feet. And I was a little bit confused. I wasn't sure that was from the street going back 45 uh, feet from the street to uh, towards the back of the house or towards the side of the house where uh, the fence would sit uh, or they put the fence up. Well, in this situation, I went over and I measured from the street to the fence and he's at 44 feet. So he's a foot short and uh, being able to go that route, you know, you have to move his fence back. But then on the other side of the fence, he has decking and he has steps there that putting the fence right up against there wouldn't be practical. Uh, so the overall consensus was that 30% uh, and whether that was from the back of the house towards the front of the house, uh, that it, someone could put a, I guess, a side fence there. So there's still a lot of confusion um, on uh, what we can do with this fence situation. I think it's got to come back to the committee. I think we have to look at the ordinance and um, we should be receiving a letter, I believe, from the Joint Lane Use Board with uh, the recommendations. Am I correct, Kitty? The board had asked um, Michelle Taylor to prepare a letter uh, detailing their recommendations, which was that a six foot high fence be allowed up to uh, from the back of the building up to the first uh, 30 percent. Is that correct, Janice? Basically, the, the recommendation percent. Yeah, they looked at the ordinances and after a lot of discussion, disagreements, um, the consensus was that, all right, we'll, we'll allow a six foot fence to come up the side yard, um, not corner lots notwithstanding. Um, from the rear building line, you can come up 30% of the length of the, the building. So for example, if your house is 20 feet along the side yard, um, from the rear, you would be able to come up, um, what's that, six feet um, to, to, from the rear building line. Um, that's 30%. So whatever the length of the house is along the side, you can come up 30%. That's their recommendation. Um, some of the board members thought that 50% was more appropriate. It's an easier calculation. You're asking the zoning officer to get into 30% yes. of the, you know, 50% half, you can come halfway up. Um, some board members stuck at, no, four feet, it's what it is. And then, so the kind of the compromise was this 30%. That basically was the recommendation um, of, of the board, the consensus. Um, was all right. Well, we'll we'll be okay with 30 30 percent. Um, again, it is township committee's decision. You you ask the board to review these ordinances. Neither of them were chosen. They didn't like either of them. Um, but what they did come up with was this um, 
30% off the rear building line, you could bring that six foot fence up the side. Yeah. Um, but it is township okay. committee's decision. Um, you know, right. but that's well, the recommendation. All right, we'll wait the uh, receipt of the letter and distribute that. Uh, Bernie, you said something early in, in your description there that if, if the uh, property owner in question had just come to the planning board just walked in and said, hey, I got this situation. I want to do this fence. Did I hear you right that they said they probably would have said okay? It may have been okay. It, it would have been reviewed and it possibly could have been okay. It wasn't, uh, it was something that, a comment that uh, the planner had made. Uh, but the, the board wasn't polled as far as how no. they would have voted. I, I yeah. would caution against uh, right, that recommendation. Plus the 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 resident, you know, the person would still have, have to pay all the requisite fees and escrows. You know, that, that well, they definitely were not in favor of the administrative review process. That that they That's definitely true. were not in favor of. And and they did express concern about what what does the board and what did the township committee members want the town to look like? Um, so they were concerned about allowing high fences coming up um, too close to the front yard. So. And also the attorney Lou Gardy um, also uh, was asked about the administrative review process uh, if how that um, kind of juxtaposed with the um, municipal land use law and she had concerns uh, um, about um, kind of usurping that uh, municipal land use process under uh, the land use law. Yeah. Any comments from committee? Well, I thought, I, I thought it was my understanding that he would actually have had to apply for a variance not even a review before the planning board um, in order to do what he requested, what he was requesting. And yeah. yes, he did, he did need a variance. He did need a variance. And uh, so there are uh, fees and escrows that are required that can be cumbersome and, uh, and not affordable to some residents. And, I think if people look at the situation, it's hard to make an ordinance that covers all these different situations in town. Cause I've seen some fencing in town that is, oh my God, it's just terrible. Um, where they have a corner property and they have a fence all along there and, uh, it, it, and it's six foot and it looks terrible. In this particular case, you would hardly see his fence. It's, it sits back. It's, I mean, if it's the property that I looked at on Vine, I think it's Vine yes. Street. Um, well, the, the adjacent property and building is a, is a two-story garage that the fence yeah. faces. It's, well, the, face, the fence doesn't affect the look of the neighborhood at all. It's hardly visible. True. And I think it's very difficult to make an ordinance that fits every situation in town and that these situations should be reviewed individually and not charge a resident a fee that they would have to post for a variance. I, I mean, and I appreciate our board and I don't, I, I, you know, I'm not trying to take their job away, but I think if people would go out and take a look at this property, they would agree that his fence is fine to replace it. Well, so how I, do you yeah, one, do of the, one of the comments that was made was that uh, um, the board was not in favor of writing an ordinance just to accommodate one person. Exactly. Right. I understand that. But somehow, I think if there's some way to have people come to the board as a review to see what they're doing and maybe the board can approve it without going through that whole variance process. They have to notify residents in a certain radius, I think it may be 200 feet, 
that's an expense in itself. Certified mail today is $8 for a regular letter. So if they have to notify 50 people, that's an added expense. So I, I would think the board should have a separate review process. And maybe that is one way to protect the fencing in town, but also to the benefit of the residents so they don't have to spend so much money. Um, I wonder if they would consider that. I don't. I just think the variance for that man is absurd. I'm sorry. I don't know if, if municipal land use law allows for that provision for a board, Correct. any board to do that. Oh, they don't? Yeah. It's not it, It's not allowed? Well, that's that would be the legal question. And I know that um, we had discussed with Doug um, just routinely approving conforming minor subdivisions and he was not in favor of that because then the neighbors don't know what's going on. So he his advice has been that the neighbors should be notified and should be told when things are going on. Now, I don't know if that is as concerning with respect to somebody's fence unless somebody's trying to put a six foot high fence around their whole property, in which case, yeah, then there is an issue, but um, I, I can't yeah, I answer the legal question. Yeah. Right, exactly. So I, if, I would ask, the, I mean, that we all drive around, we all know the town, but uh, maybe next time we're driving around, walking around, take, take a good, take a look at, and look at fences that are, that exist now and see if, if, if there is a modification to the fence ordinance that could capture a lot of these non-conforming fences and try to fix it for the most most uh, the largest number of people uh, as far as replacements because it's obvious driving around walking around uh, there's a lot of fences that are non-conforming out of compliance obviously never got a permit for it and so forth and uh, um, See well, if we can tackle this at the next meeting uh, after we get the letter from the board. Yeah, they expressed concern about extending a fence too far and possibly encroaching into off street parking and taking away off street parking. They expressed concern, and um, Lou Gardy said that you cannot grandfather an illegal fence. If it was installed illegally, it is an illegal structure and you cannot grandfather that in. That was her legal mm -hmm. interpretation. So, you know, until we get Michelle's, but Michelle's letter is going to recommend, be based on the board's recommendation that the um, six foot high fence be permitted in the side yard as Janice confirmed for me up to the first 30% of the, from the back of the principal structure. So that would grandfather the fences that fit that criteria. I mean, it would. <laughs> it would grandfather those, but anything yeah. else that's out there, if somebody has a six foot high fence, you know, fully up to the front of their house, it's not gonna grandfather that. The ordinance says that you can't have a six foot high fence any closer than I think it's 40 feet as Fern said 40 feet from the public right of way so that's okay. already in our code that's already in the code yeah. that's already in the code so let's say you did you know an ordinance that allowed a fence six foot fence along the side and let's say just for arguments like 50 percent let's say but yet it still didn't make that 40 foot requirement from from the road you still couldn't you couldn't do that even though you meet the percentage from the rear um you still have that um amount of feet from the road that has to be met also and that's currently in our code right right and i think that's that's more of an aesthetic situation so that you don't have a six foot high fence all the way up not only should it stop at the backyard but it shouldn't be if a house is very close to the road doesn't yeah have a large front yard so it's not getting too close to the sidewalk and the street. Okay. 
All right, we'll see what the letter uh, what the letter says, and we'll walk around town and and with a, a squinty eye and look at fences and see what we <laughs> can come up with and uh, talk about it to the next meeting or two. So, um, anything else, Fern? No, thank you, Janice. Thank you, Kitty, for uh, helping to explain <laughs> what we experienced at Joint Land Use Board. You're welcome. All right, thank that's you. all I have, sir. Thank you. Uh, Chris, there you are. I hey lost you there. Um, yeah, so I attended the library board meeting. Just a reminder that their annual appeal is going on right now, um, raising funds. So right, get your checkbooks out. Um, one fundraiser that they have coming up November 7th um, is a tea and scone virtual event. So for $20, you can go pick up uh, a whole tea kit and at 11 a.m. Uh, sit down with your friends virtually and enjoy a cup of tea. Um, still on the, um, the Delanco Women's Club 5K is virtual this year as well. Um, registrations are open for that and it's our big fundraiser of the year because trivia was canceled. Um, so you can sign up and log your, your walk or run times uh, starting Saturday, October 24th to Friday, October 30th. Uh, registrations are $10, but I think they go up tomorrow, $15. Um, and I'll personally deliver your Delanco Women's Club uh, face shield. It's a, a neck gaiter, um, which turned out really great. And we've gotten lots of compliments on those so far. So um, other than that, um, this Sunday, Carol Murphy had um, a resource community fair in a uh, at Temple Sinai in Cinnamons and um, just trying to connect people to resources that are available in the in in our county that people might not be aware of. Um, women recently divorced but getting back into the workforce. Um, there's resume writing and skill building. Um, Rowan University was there. Um, Burlington County Library System was there trying to um, get people um, aware of, of what the library can do for them. Um, and, uh, oh, I did wind up, I, at our last meeting, I mentioned an outbreak of COVID at my terminal at work. So I did take advantage of the county offers for Burlington residents um, or those working in, in Burlington County, um, an opportunity to request a, an at-home test kit. So you, you get that in the mail. I, for me, I requested it Wednesday during the day. It was on my doorstep Thursday. And then I logged in um, and I had like a Zoom counseling session. And then this poor woman watched me spit into a vial for a disturbingly long time. Um, and then put the results in our uh, UPS Dropbox. And I had, um, so that was Thursday night. Um, it was picked up Friday. And Sunday morning, I got an email saying that I'm negative. So. Um, so that was good, but it was easy and free and uh, a great resource for people to know about. Um, and it looks like that's all I've got. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. If you turned out positive, you have to get on one of those ships and leave or what? Hey, I'd be willing to uh, go anywhere at the moment. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see, so we can keep this moving. Uh, uh, Aaron Provenzano gave me a list of uh, some things from the GIF. Uh, October 2nd, she sent out a, an email to the committee of a uh, course that the GIF has put out that elected officials and supervisors, managers uh, uh, regarding protecting children uh, that uh, uh, we, in our duties, would have responsibility for managing the oversight of those organizations. So um, if you haven't completed that, there's still a couple dates that are available. I've, a reservation or signed up for one in, in uh, November. So hopefully it, uh, I'll get that out of the way, but uh, that's a requirement for all, uh, all committee members. And uh, a lot of information uh, out on the GIF website uh, on COVID, like we don't need uh, another website to go look at, but uh, there's some additional information that uh, is always uh, very fresh and timely. It's on the uh, Burlington County GIF uh, uh, website. So I'll terminate my comments there. Consent agenda items. 
Consent agenda items are considered to be routine, will be enacted in a single motion. Any item requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda. All consent agenda items will be reflected in full in the minutes. Are there any items that any uh, committee member would like to have removed for separate consideration or questions or comments about any of those on the consent? Hearing none. Resolution 2020-122, providing for the insertion of any special item of revenue in the budget of the, any county or municipality pursuant to NJ uh, SA 40A colon 4-87, chapter 159, public law 1985. Uh, payment of bills, authorize chief of financial officer to pay in any obligations due and payable prior to the next township committee meeting on November 16, 2020. Approval of department reports as submitted. Uh, the approval of the consent agenda, please. A motion. So moved. So moved. Who got that one? Kate got it. Kate got it. Second was. Burn. I got the second. Roll call, please. Mr. Brown? Yes. Ms. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Ms. Holland? Yes. Mr. Olat? Yes. Mr. Templeton? Yes, thank you. Uh, report on bid results, uh, the 2020 road program and the drainage improvement project. Who, who's who got that, Mrs. Lohr or Mr. Schwab? Richard, you wanna? Sure. We were both uh, in the yeah, on the road program, if you remember, we combined the money that we received as state aid and the money that you allocate in the budget for road work. So it's a single project. Uh, we had uh, between the two of them about 390,000 for construction. You'll see that the, uh, the low bid is 382.172, so it's under our 390, and uh, you know that works out. Unfortunately, in the past, the bids have come in higher than that. We've had to not be able to do the alternates, but this includes doing the alternates. So we're hoping to also, for example, do the River's Edge piece that was listed as an alternate for roads. So, and this Paving Plus company is a company that uh, is a sister company of the one that did Peachtree and the other streets this past, the last program. So they uh, at least know how to get the job done. And Harry has no problem with them doing it. So we recommend that particular one. And as you see, it's portions of Spruce, Lilac, Walter, and then River's Edge will be the alternate that we'll get to. And then the other one is the drainage projects. There's pipe that needs replaced on Hickory and pipe that needs replaced on Chestnut. It's uh, collapsing. Uh, we did estimate uh, probably 120,000 plus came in at 111,940. And uh, as Harry pointed out, once this company's on the job, we will they will give us a price to do the uh, the back backflow preventer on Hickory to help with the drainage because all in the same neighborhood and hopefully get a very good price on that so that you authorize sufficient funds to get all that done. And uh, hopefully I'll award these two bids and get going. One of the things we mentioned in the road program is that they'll do the concrete work. If the weather all of a sudden remains balmy, they can do the reconstruction work, but the chances are pretty good that they won't. So the concrete work will get done. They will not open up the roads. So we don't have a situation like we had a few years ago Maple, I think it was, where we opened it up and spent the whole winter uh, on stone. And it'll be in the spring when they'll actually do the paving work. So the road programs, you'll see just all the concrete work done. The storm sewer can be done, unless it's snowing heavily, they can do it anytime. So that stuff will get done uh, probably in November and December. Any questions? All right. Okay, go ahead and vote. All right, uh, this is under one vote for both resolutions correct yes all right and then on 123 we're going to add at uh to the title contingent upon njdot approval yes all right resolution 2020-123 award of bid and contract for road improvement program contingent upon njdot approval and resolution 2020-124 award, award of bid and contract for drainage improvement project hickory and chestnut streets a motion please please so moved John Brown, second. Second. Bernal Hutt. Roll call, please. 
Mr. Brown. Yes. Ms. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Olatz. Yes. Mr. Templeton. Yes. Well done. All right. Meeting open to the public for comments and questions. Session two. Uh, this is via live or audio or typed in chat, as Mrs. Lohr mentioned. And please unmute uh, your microphone for audio comments and questions. Any comments or questions from the public, please, now? Once, twice, hearing none, comment and question section of the meeting is now closed. Correspondence. Correspondence? I have no additional correspondence, Mayor. All right, thank you. Status of coronavirus disease, uh, COVID-19. Uh, um, I'll be glad when we have an agenda that doesn't have this topic. Um, community impact update. Uh, we've gotten to get the daily reports. Uh, the one just popped in during the meeting here. I'll forward that on after we're done. Uh, our numbers, Delanco remain the same, but uh, some surrounding towns uh, have a handful or more increases. Uh, as we've seen, the numbers have been going up for over the last uh, four or five weeks. And uh, between that and, and the normal flu cycle, uh, it looks like we're uh, everything that was forecast and talked about in the spring and summer is coming true. So uh, the information on the, on the COVID test sites uh, that the, by the county is on the county website. It's on our website. Uh, um, Beverly and Janice work real hard to keep that up to date. Also, there's a, uh, the county flu immunization locations. Uh, there's information there on where that, uh, where you get a flu shot. So um, very important and uh, let's try to keep this from getting worse. Uh, report on state county relief funds, the CARES Act. Uh, and we've got a resolution that was the late ad this afternoon on that. Uh, I think yeah, if you like, I can give you a quick, quick update because it deals with money stuff. Uh, if you remember, uh, uh, we spent some money on a lot of things during the main part of COVID for cleaning, for keeping everyone separated and so on. And those things theoretically were reimbursable. But Janice did submit FEMA applications. We haven't heard whether we're getting any of that back. She's also been working with Harry on doing that uh, room so that we have an extra window to separate the public from our employees uh, in order to serve them safely. Uh, if you remember, the federal government uh, appropriated a few bucks and they sent money to states and to large counties or large municipalities. Small counties and small municipalities were supposed to then get that money from the state. So the state has finally deemed appropriate to authorize $60 million uh, for those that didn't get it directly from the federal government. And they have a formula as to the maximum that each municipality can get. In Delanco's case, it's $54,815 based on standards. Has a lot to do with actually the quantity of uh, cases in your municipality. So if you're fortunate to have not a lot of cases, it was less, but it's mostly population. Uh, and we thought that that allocation was okay, then they're gonna give us a form, we're gonna make the list of all the things we spent, send it to them and get reimbursed, but it's not quite so simple. Uh, it requires actually an application. It's not a competitive application, but it's a more formalized application. And the important thing when you make an application is it needs the governing body's consent. So uh, we realized uh, at the last minute that the application is due November 10th. The information on the proofs of what you spent is not due till December 10th. But part of the application is the consent of the governing body. We received this information by email on late Friday. So today, of course, first day we had to look at it. And you don't meet again until the 16th. So this is the last meeting before November 10th. So we need your authorization to apply for up to $54,815. We don't have anywhere near that much. And it also may be impacted by the FEMA money. So if uh, we do get FEMA money, then they don't, we're not gonna get paid twice. 
So it's the state and the feds will go back and forth from that. And it'll also include the proposed construction work on that room. And because there is a provision for that, and the hope is that they'll then reserve funds because you don't get the money until you spend it and prove that you spent it. So that's one issue. The other issue is that the, uh, the Division of Local Government Services sent out a local finance notice indicating how we would deal with uh, extraordinary deficits if we had expenditures that were not covered by this or we had significant revenue loss that causes a deficit, we're not allowed to have a deficit. So just, I don't think we're gonna have this problem as I think I mentioned before, the major area where we're not getting income that will not be anywhere near what we budgeted is through the municipal court because of the uh, fact the police officers were not supposed to go and, and engage uh, and, and issue a lot before, but secondarily, because there hasn't been any court until recently. Uh, but we are fortunate that because of the crossings, we have a excess of income in the construction fee side and all the other fees are generally coming in as they should. So my belief is that you will not have a deficit, but just so you know, if you did, there is a process where you can do what's called a special emergency and you can even borrow if you need to, if you're a cash flow problem, and then you pay it back over a three to five year period. So there is a state process for that. Uh, the other thing is that technically we are overextended in the, we put all this COVID spending money under emergency management, but we only have a little bit of money ever budgeted in that. So we've got thousands of dollars over. So we are in technically in violation of our budget. If we get the money from the state uh, prior to the audit, we're covered. If we don't, then we'll need to make transfers in November to cover it. So you may see a transfer resolution to cover it, and you technically may see an audit comment next year. But I would suspect that if we get an audit comment for us, another, you know, several hundreds of a municipalities be in the same position. But I hate to see us have an audit comment. I hate to see when we're overexpended, but this is a little different year. So that's my financial report dealing with that and hopefully it passes a resolution and all will be well by the end of the year. Yeah, Richard, could you repeat the amount that we have spent to date? Uh, I don't actually have, I have, I think where we have, I show 16,921 was a number that was charged to, I'm sorry, this building's grounds. I apologize, I'm looking at the wrong sheet. Um, see, I'm showing only about $2,400, but that's, uh, I'm sorry, right. that's another line. Maybe. Yeah, no, just, I right. mean, just yeah. to make sure. Janice, Janice, I don't know if you've been, you have, have that, uh, we have 4,000 here. Not, what I was giving you was the maximum amount we're allowed to get reimbursed for, which is the 54,000. I was just wondering what we spent to date on fixing the municipal, uh, the courtroom so that we could meet there. Which right, yeah, all that's all that's in there. All that will be in there. And that's, we, we wish we had that number, then we would have put that in the resolution. But unfortunately, we, we don't have that number. Have, um, we we'll can get, get to we'll you get soon. That because okay. we have submitted to uh, FEMA, but there's been additional expenditures. So, but that's an easy number to get for you, Kate. We'll get that. And yeah, we'll email you. We, we weren't prepared. We didn't know that we needed to have that number for tonight until okay. four o'clock this afternoon. All right, thank you. If uh, on, on the, the claim that you've already sent in for FEMA reimbursement, can those same items be put on this CARES Act claim? Yes, yes you, you do that, but you note that you've done that. Okay. You note that you've all, there's, there's two sections. Here's the stuff that you're applying for that you never applied to anywhere else before. Here's stuff that you applied for already, but you still I haven't gotten it. And I guess the state and the feds will okay. argue as to who's going to pay for that. Some additional items we want to include in this uh, CARES Act uh, application that's not part of the FEMA process is um, er, uh, administrative costs, payroll costs. So we can um, apportion out and allocate some of our res uh, personnel resources 
as and the and the uh, payroll number. So we want to apply for that, which is not allowed through the FEMA reimbursement. The other right. part, also, I was reading about if we've uh, had any um, payroll dedicated to uh, workers' comp claims, and I don't want to get into too much detail on that, but yeah. we can also capture that, which was not part of the FEMA. All right. All right. Any other questions on this? Uh, this will be resolution, uh, and this was sent late this afternoon, resolution uh, 2021-25. Uh, as Mr. Yes. Schwab uh, said, there's there's a blank spot at the bottom as far as the total fund funds uh, re requesting uh, reimbursement for. But uh, Janice, yeah, we'll fill that in at the appropriate time. Yeah, uh, this is the uh, applicant's resolution, local government emergency fund uh, CRF grant, uh, resolution 2021-25. Uh, motion, please. So moved. Second. Second. And Mr. Lutt and a second by, who was that? It was John Brown. Oh, okay. I didn't hear it. Okay, the motion, I, I missed all of that. The motion was by, by who? Burn. Okay, Burn got the, and then the second was Mr. Brown. All right, all right, thank you. Roll call. Mr. Brown. Ms. Fitzpatrick. Yes. yes. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Olette. Yes. Mr. Templeton. Yes, thank you. Uh, trick or treating guidelines update. Uh, there's some information that the State Department of Health put out uh, pretty much in line with what the CDC had put out a couple weeks earlier uh, for Delanco. Does anyone have any thoughts or any adjustments to what we've got uh, presently on the books? Uh, trick or treating is uh, terminates at 8, 8 p.m. and there's a curfew at 9 p.m. Is that correct, Chief? All right. Um, I, I had mentioned uh, or mentioned at the last meeting uh, the idea of maybe terminating trick or treating during uh, the last of daylight hours at 6 p.m. And that would uh, uh, give the opportunity that people can be out in daylight and social distance. And also the signage that the administration is uh, prepared for uh, residents that do not want to participate in trick or treating this year, that that'll obviously be visible in daylight. Um, any thoughts on that or, or one way or the other? I thought the chief had uh, actually made comments at the last meeting about changing that. My comment was if you plan to change it, Doug's not here, but I would think that we, I don't know, a resolution can override the current ordinance or we have to change yeah. the ordinance. There's a, there's a difference between the curfew where you would enforce being able to quote arrest versus putting out a statement that you are asking the trigger treat, setting a guideline to end by six o'clock. It's not, it's not, you're not changing the curfew. Change, you can change the curfew to six o'clock. That would not work. That has nothing directly to do with trick or treating the curfew. It's secondary. So it's two separate issues, I think. I really think we need to leave it alone. I rode by the basketball courts tonight and there was a whole bunch of children playing basketball, no mask. And, uh, you know, you're not going to stop trick or treat. They're going out. And to stop it at six o'clock or sunset, how, how are you going to be the police going to enforce uh, kids trick or treating? Like, hey, get off the street with a bullhorn. Just just well, let it happen. I mean, things in, in this world today are happening. You know, um, people have to use common sense. If they don't want to go out, they won't go out. I have a family member that will not go out with their children because they're still uh, believe in quarantine. And um, I, I just don't think we should be involved. Well, I think, I think as this body is is, is the, the local board of health, and uh, I, I've heard from several people that uh, do not want to uh, do not want trick or treaters uh, coming up and ringing their doorbell and dealing with that. That uh, I, it, it would seem that a, a daylight cutoff uh, or the end of daylight would. Uh, make it safer for all that uh, people can see each other uh, on the streets and sidewalks and also the signage that admin is prepared and uh, made available both in hard copy and online 
that people could see that in its, uh, you know, and as you say, people can use their discretion, but uh, be able to see that, you know, if a resident or household does not want anyone trick or treating that, you know, they just move on to the next house that uh, may be open or, you know, be doing it in a, in a safe way. But uh, going up to a house at night, uh, even with the, if you've got the lights out, you know, I've always had people coming up at a, you know, up to uh, ringing the doorbell, banging on the door after, after curfew, after, after Halloween in past years. And, you know, you're, you're going to have that, but I'm just trying to, for the people that do follow the rules, uh, trying to give them something to work with here. So a suggestion. Can you put that out as like a mayor's message, uh, sorry, mayor's message, just saying, look, you know, we're not trying to stop all festivities, but it would seem that common sense dictates, you know, trick or treating during daylight hours this year. Um, we trust your judgment. Uh, township is providing these signs to post, which are obviously more visible during the daylight, just something kind of imploring them to use good judgment and not saying that we are going to evacuate the streets come six o'clock, but no. for those that want to no. exercise an abundance of caution. So suggested serving size. That's a good idea. I like that. And we'll do that instead. So just a thought. Uh, let's see. Item four, status of township committee meeting for November 16th. I guess we're going to have one. The question is Zoom or in person or what? That, that would, be, like that would be, be the idea to discuss, um, you know, with the current, you know, COVID numbers. Does it look like, you know, the um, would continue in a Zoom only platform or uh, try a hybrid in person only? Um, we can always, um, Mary, you can always, as we get closer to that date um you know look at the numbers from the that are being released by the county are we on a downward trend or are we on an up you know kind of staying where we're at upward trend all right you know, it's, let's, yeah. let's continue with with the zoom uh, remote virtual and, and uh, we'll evaluate as we get closer all right yeah, sounds good. Right. Discussion items, review of state mandated best practices inventory results. I know, Richard, you've been waiting. <laughs> yeah. Almost asleep. No. <laughs> Trying to move it along as fast as possible. I know. I, know, this I is appreciate the... Well, that just means the meeting's almost over. That's, That's right. But <laughs> hopefully, fair. I don't have to say much because you all read everything I sent you. I gave you well, your oh, yeah. I did. Okay. It was so, very well prepared. <laughs> All right. The question is, anyone have any any comments? Uh, the key things are the things that we said no, no to, and there's so few of them. We certainly uh, have 19 points, and we only needed 16 to avoid a reduction of state aid. And then there's the large unscored survey that, you know, I put what I thought. But the interesting thing is that they give the chief administrative officer the authority to make these judgments and send them in and just review them with you. But I mean, frankly, these are things that, that you could have different opinions on. But does anyone have any comments one way or another? You saw the no's, by the way, are things that are almost yeses. For example, the interesting thing was that instead of uh, the, the, the personnel policy update, we update it whenever the GIF has changes and those changes got delayed. So instead of being done this year, we're doing the next year. And they said three years. Well, so we're six months over on that. So the answer is no. And uh, some of the other things dealing deal with uh, social media accounts, whether we have a written, uh, uh, a written policy, which we probably should do something you ought to think about our professional services contracts. They have a, they're all concerned about should have a not exceed number. Not that we've ever had that issue, that would generally be for uh, contracts that pay a fixed amount per month or something, but we pay by the hour, both the engineering, the planning and the legal. I don't understand why that would even be a, an issue, but 
We have not done that. And if anyone feels that that should be in any contract we have with professionals, then when you hit that number, they've got to come back to you. Uh, we do that, of course, for specific project things with the engineer in particular, and occasionally with the planner. Uh, the legal is a different story. They talk a lot about sewer uh, re redu reducing stormwater runoff. Sounds a little bigger than Little Delanco, uh, but seems like a more major deal. And it talks about major investment policy documentation that considering how little interest there is, no matter, you know, to put in a lot of work to uh, possibly figure out another couple dollars of interest for cash flow. But those are really the only things that are issues that are no's. Uh, does anyone else have any comment about any of these things, any direction? If not, I think we've done our due diligence. We can indicate that we've reviewed it with you on this date and uh, everybody was supportive of the submission as you've seen it. Looks good. I'm done, thank you. Thank you. And let's see. Good work. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Always welcome. Uh, and just uh, to keep uh, the topic alive, uh, the continued discussion of the status of uh, 200 ash canvas shop. Any anybody have any further thoughts or comments on that? Uh, we're awaiting a, uh, I guess, uh, specs uh, engineering proposal for the demolition specs. Yes. So for waiting for time. Um, while we're waiting. Yeah, uh, the building's stable as it is. I don't think we need to spend any money uh, in the immediate future to do anything to protect it. Uh, that was in uh, one of the options in Mr. Fox's uh, report, but uh, I just uh, uh, wanted to give the committee and the community enough time to really ponder uh, options before we do something that's uh, irreversible. So anyway, just so have to keep that alive and and uh, continue on. So if there are no comments, um, do we need an executive session or anything? The only thing is if um, Kate was going to report on um, she uh, anything with the uh, Rivers Edge HOA concerning that lot. If not- No, no, I don't have anything to report on that yet. I'm having trouble contacting Jackie, I, she, she must be away. Okay. I've con I, I sent her email, business and also personal and I've called her. So she must be away this week. Right. Um, so I don't have anything, but I do have a question on the GIF, um, Mike, that you said that we had to attend and we had to sign up for that. I had asked Aaron about that. If we went to that GIF meeting in the spring, that dinner when they discussed uh, children and if there's abuse to be reported and what have you, that that covered that meeting. I think that's correct, that Aaron. That is correct. So that so that we don't need to go to that unless we missed that meeting. True. We don't correct. need to sign on for that. True. Correct. correct. The only thing I'm I'm asking that ladies on help out with is the chairpersons of their groups to get that they have to get it done okay so when my email went out i went to all of them plus their secretaries and all the committee members as well because they do have to follow the instructions on the email to um to to um complete the training okay so would that include the delanco women's club no no it does not include no, that's that. not official okay all right Okay, thank you. Yes. I have um, potential. I don't, I don't know if it's executive, um, but um, a, a builder has approached me about doing something with the Rincocas Avenue property on um, the Burger Estate. Um, and he wants me to look into the zoning. And I don't know if we've ever relaxed the zoning there when we did the affordables but somebody is looking at possibly putting four units on that property. Uh, I don't know how to advise. Should I see the zoning officer? Him first. 
Absolutely. They would need to, they could make a use variance. So would he probably would need to, he was thinking that maybe we changed the zoning there in that R6 uh, when we allowed um, the affordables. Well, my dog going at me. Well, well, I don't think we changed the zoning. Um, what happened was the, um, uh, there was a suit involved there and- um, Excuse me, I gotta actually, let my dog go. Yeah, I, I think I, I, I think um, we never changed the zoning, but I think the Joint Land Use Board allowed that zoning to change from a 50 foot um, frontage to 37 and a half. Yeah. And I was very adamant against that. And I had proof that the township didn't want frontages that they wanted at least 50 foot because we sold two properties to adjacent property owners in this district and we actually put in their deed restrictions that they could not build on a, on that on the piece of property that they were buying that was next to their property uh, one was on washington street and one was on orchard but they let the um affordable housing go to 37 and a half there so i don't know if that set a precedent where they could do it again. I don't know what no. the front is. I, I, think, I think, John, any developer who thinks that it's faster and easier to get what they want through a zoning change versus a use variance is thinks they're in the wrong country. Uh, yeah. Because the process to do that is six months to year. You see what, we, how about a four foot for six foot fence? How long does that take? We're talking yeah. about a major issue here. So anybody who has a particular project that they think makes sense, they go to the Joint Land Use Board for use variance. That is the most direct way to do that. The, the, that board could say, you know something, our master plan doesn't, means that to do that would violate our master plan, but yet it's not a bad idea. Maybe we should relook at the master plan and then that could happen after the fact. I've seen that happen. But to try to mend the master plan, which you have to do first before you could change the ordinance. And by then this person could have had their use variance or at least found out that the joint land use board, which has the most say about it, doesn't like the idea. And so why would they change the master plan if they won't give the use variance? So yeah, I, I, I don't why, know why, I don't know why uh, he came to me, it just- They tend to- yeah, they like think to feel, that they want to get the it. flavor and feel, you know, they right. come out, see if they're going to waste their time. And right. um, basically, I said, you're going to have to go through an approval process. Uh, you know, right. what you want. I, you know, I mean, whatever my opinion is of the area doesn't mean me. Right. Anything, so, uh, all right, I'll advise. And uh, Janice, the, uh, the League of Municipalities Conference is all virtual this yes. year. Do we still have to register through you to do these classes or? Uh, no, actually pre-registration is over. So you would have to, uh, <laughs> uh, um, you know, red, you can still register, um, okay. but you would have to link on, I can send you the link again, if you, if you're interested okay. in that, if there's any right. classes you, you, you know, you, you think you want to take, then, um, you would register for that, but I'll, I'll, I'll send that to you. Thank you. Information on that. Right. Anything else? Any other comments? I, I just want to wish the candidates uh, running for the school board and for the township committee good luck. Uh, we won't meet until after the election. Uh, I saw Fern out there uh, hustling and doing his campaign thing. I saw Phil out there uh, putting signs up and uh, the school board candidates putting their signs out. It's uh, It makes it exciting around town to to see that going on, especially after a COVID year. So yeah. good luck, everybody. Thank you. Well done. Yep. All right. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All right. We're out of here. Thank you all. Thank you. Well Thank done. You. Have a good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. Bye. Good night, John Boy. Good night. <laughs> good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs>